there. Um, yeah, in, ter in terms of his stature in the game, in terms of his performance as he leads from the front, I know he hasn't got a massive amount of captaincy behind him yet, but between now and then, hopefully Farrell gets dropped from the England team. Marrow's captain of that as well. And there. Oh, mate, you had them. You it's, had Mar them. it's Marcus Smith no, time. You had them. You had I love how you looked at me when you, you mentioned Marrow as captain. I was his mentor. Ian Peel, the Saracens coaches in here, nodding. I taught him all he knows. LJ, we've got another question, haven't we, from the Millions? Wait. This one's actually from me, and, and what I'm wondering is, Mauro Toje came under a lot of criticism during the Six Nations. So what is it that Warren Gatland is doing differently in the coaching that we're seeing such amazing things from this amazing man? Shana, that's you, mate. All you. I yeah. mean, really, I would have loved to work under Gats. I should have worked under Gats. I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I just think um, Gats is a very good... He's a good people person. Um, he's very good at getting the best out of his best players. He knew, without doubt, that Mar Maratoje is world-class. He's one of the best players in the world rugby. Right, you, you go through times when you're not playing your best rugby, maybe, and the fact that Wales won the Six Nations, by the way, um, <laughs> would, would mean probably there was a, several English players that didn't play well, Mario maybe being one of them, and his, one of his issues has been his discipline. He gives some horrendous penalties sometimes, and you're thinking, let me, a player of your class, if you just didn't do that two or three times a game, there's a good chance that you're going to win the match. Um, and what, what Warren's probably gone up to him, and he's probably gone up to him at the start to him and say, look, Mario, you're, you're one of the best players on this tour. These are the things you need to work on. If you work on them and your discipline improves and this improves, you will be a test starter, because we're all saying the same thing. And Gats is very good at getting the best out of these people. And um, he's probably laid a challenge for him as well. Like I said earlier, the fact that Alan Wynn's come back as Lazarus, he's come played in the test. He's probably said something like, look, We've got players like uh, Alan Wynn that's probably going to be a bolter if he's fit. Where are you? Are you going to challenge this man? Are you going to be the first man into these rucks? Are you going to train harder than Alan Wynn? Are you going to play better than when you get your opportunities? Because if you do, I can promise you, you're going to be in the first test team. And I think he's done exactly that because his discipline, his discipline has been better. He's been a, a, an all-round better experienced player. And what a performance in your first test, which is the most important test. You win that, you're on to the series. So, and, and, and that's one of the reasons he's played so well, I think. I just want to point something out. You know his name's not Mario. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's won the crowd, yeah, but he is. In Wales, he is. Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah. Italian, yeah. he's English. There's, Maro. There's a silent eye there somewhere, I can assure you. And, uh, and as the, Welsh, the Welsh always chuck an extra letter in, right? Either an I <laughs> or Tesco. We say Tesco's, so it's fine. It's fine. Absolutely. Um, Bobby, let's get to the headlines of the week then. We've got to go to it. Um, if we can call it a social media war, let's call it that. Let's just call it a lot of chat around Razzie on Twitter. I am absolutely loving it. I'm watching his followership go up. I think he's got a blue tick now. There's a guy called Yako Johan who is basically Razzie's brother or is Razzie on the way out. If anyone, has everyone seen what Razzie's put out there today? Maybe not watch the full hour long thing. I love Razzie Erasmus as a coach. You're someone that's quite close to him and has worked with him or alongside him. All this stuff going over on social. I thought his tweet after the game was quite classy, but as we're seeing things unfold, this is Chris Jones, one of the reporters, that the tweets that's come out today. And then off the... This is what Razzy said at the press conference as well. You know, I love the fact that he's out there on social, which is how we all live our lives, let's be honest, when we're out there trying to build a following. And he's giving us some real insight. It is, there's a value to that, apparently. Um, you know, he's come out today, it's gone viral. There's an, an hour-long kind of segment where, in his spare time, but in his spring box gear, is talking around some of the decisions in the match. Obviously, there's some headline talking points around the TMO decisions. Why has Razzi come out, do you think, and done that ahead of the second test? Because he's a, he's a coach, all-class, World Cup winner. I'm blabbing on here. Bobby, you know him. Here's the floor. Why is Razzi doing this? I mean, it's a great question. I, 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 um, I admit that it's, it's, I'm not sure the platform is right. You know, he's, he's removed himself from the head coach role um, and he's bringing himself into, a, I mean, you know, we were talking about him as the water boy in the week, et cetera, et cetera. But he, he's, he's director of, of, of rugby. Um, I think the one, the one thing you've got to remember is, is, is uh, Russi has always been trying different things. So social media is a platform. You can say something. You can do something. When, when I was commentating in South Africa, Russi Erasmus was, uh, in his first year of coaching, he was, he, was, he was given a fine by South African rugby because he was standing on the roof of the Bloemfontein Stadium 
and he had a green, uh, a green, like a, like a, um, an airplane. You know those guys, the conductor who tells you when to turn. I know that. Yeah, you know those guys. He was on the roof and he was giving out signals to the players on the field as to as to what he felt was the, the next, the best thing they could do next. He also then he, he had a he had a line out move where um, he moved the props to the back of the line out. Got one of the light guys. Got two two players to to lift the guy up, and then once he'd caught it, they just turned around and ran with the player in the air towards the opposition. So, and sprint. I mean, almost got you know. They, they, I think they scored a try in the first match. You know, Southern and rugby were like, that's against the rules. You can't do that. that to, so he's always been innovating. You know, he's always been doing things uh, uh, that that are different on the field. Now this has gone to the off the field side, and and I think he might have just sort of pushed the boundaries a little bit, maybe spilt over on the boundaries. To be honest, if you look at the, the hour, he's, 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 he's probably got 59 points, and 58 of them, he makes complete sense. He's, oh, he's, he's actually, he's great, actually got, great, a, he's got a really insight. good argument. Yeah, it's great insight, Bobby. Yeah. I mean, but when you look at it, it is quite risky, isn't it? You no, think it's incredibly risky. He's and calling out World a, Rugby as well. Yeah, he is. And, and that's what I'm saying. So he's an innovator on the field. I think this might push the boundaries a little bit. He's, he's, he's going to get a slap on the wrists, um, and maybe more. I, I, I think, um, and also you, you don't want to, it, it, it needs to be in good taste. You know, so, so everybody knows that there, there were some contentious decisions. Nobody from South Africa has said that's why they lost at all. They've said, you know, they were outplayed in the Lions. We know played better in the second half, fully deserved the win. That's absolutely no problem. What's happened here is that, you know, they're sort of coming out and maybe insinuating that at the time they thought of it. And I think that detracts from what they did. I, I quite like the high pose where they're like, you know, that game's gone, let's move on. I also think... He is trying to take the focus off the guys who are playing, and he's trying to say to the, the referee and the, ve and, the, and the sort of TMO and that, do your job. And you know, everybody's paid here. Just do the right thing on the field. Is it, is it almost as well, like, they're 1-0 down. It's almost like, well, I feel like I've got nothing to lose here. I've got to do what I, what, what I, whatever it takes kind of to get back into this second test. Mate, and if you, you, you look, the, the TMOs now and the refs are probably... It's a really weird position for a TMO and a ref to be in now because they're like... Uh, well, uh, he's actually got a point on something. Oh, he's something. got a point. You know, if, if, if you they don't see steady. those things happening again in the this is what I'm saying, because yeah. of the stuff he said. So, yes, he's, he's on a thin line, but you'd like to think that he'd keep his job, but put, put the, the air of doubt in some of the, the team it, decisions. It's a, it's a thin line, but it's a hard line, and he's got you know, his reputation and, and his job on the line, yeah. on that line. And, and, and if he doesn't do something now, he's going to say to himself, why, you know, why the hell was I in the role? I actually look at it, I think, you go back to last week when it was actually the Thursday that they announced Yonker as the TMO. Now, Warren Gatlin goes out in the press and has a big fit about it and says he's not happy, it's a disgrace. World Rugby shouldn't have put Marius Yonker in that position to be the TMO, a South African commentating and giving decisions on a massive game for South Africa. But I, 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 don't, I don't know why they could do that. Why could they, they could fly the referee in. Why could they not fly in a TMO? Is it like we've got a budget problem? It's ridiculous. But I think the, I think the big thing on Razzi is he's now trying to play the press game yeah. that Warren did last week to try and turn, basically turn the, the focus on how bad the referee was because the focus was on Marius Jonker last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Then you make those really tight calls and he didn't give South Africa the try for Vili LaRue's try, which could have been given. You know, the wording around it, it wasn't clear and obvious for me. And he said, oh, I think, you know, it looks like it's a, he's offside, but it wasn't clear and obvious. Then the tip tackle on Hamish Watson doesn't get looked at. That's a yellow card in every day of the week. Now, the questions were perhaps in Marius Jonker's head. You know, Warren Gatlin's come out and, and said things in the press, so the pressure's on him. So now I think Razi Erasmus has tried to be clever and preempt that and say, look, we didn't get the rub the green last week. The, the British and Irish Lions did. South Africa were treated badly compared to what the Lions were. Yeah. So he's just trying to change the story and trying to get on the front foot with that situation. And listen, social media is another form of media. Yeah. Whether you do it in a press conference or whether you do it in a paper, we're reading it online, we're looking at it and we're watching it. So I don't see a problem with it. He's gone to some serious degrees of an hour long rant in, in front of a camera, but he's trying to do whatever he can to try and help South Africa win this weekend, I think. The, the only thing I would say to add to that, you know, this is a war. You're at war, and, and, and the, the result means everything. So he's going to try his best. If he, if he errs on the side of trying too hard, I don't think that makes Rusty Erasmus a bad person. He's trying to take the pressure off the players and try and level the playing field. And, and to be honest, I, I feel a bit sorry for him. I'm, I, I'm not sure he's being backed up by South African Rugby Union, etc. And, and he's trying to create, you know, a mist of doubt. It's, and is he doing it right? That's a whole other debate, you know. 
I love it because, you know, it's, it's 24 hours of action going on and off the oh, field. Bobby, we're loving it, mate. But you look <laughs> on screen. Who's running the show here? Because Razzy Erasmus has now stepped up into the office, but he's actually stepped down. He's water boy, mass round by the throat, running on messages. But that's the head coach stood next to him. Who's running the show? Do you think Razzy is still in charge? Sorry. It's a great point I've got to tell you now. <laughs> Ready? Bobby, who's running the show here? <laughs> Well, look, I mean, it's no, it's no secret that these guys have worked together for 20 plus years. You know, um, Jacques was a, is, a, is a qualified physio. He worked in some of the teams with Rossi. He's worked together with him in, 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 um, in the UK. He's worked internationally. He knows what he wants to do. Rossi has always been a guy who said, look, I, I don't like the hands-on interaction with the, with the press and that taking away. I want to be strategic. I want to do... I want to work with the players. I want to make them better. And I think, I think the reversal of those roles has allowed him to do that, but maybe he's taken it a step too far.